essentially what happened before the Big Bang. Right? You have to be careful with the language. Consequently, if you define the Large Bang with extreme caution as the time the universe was very hot and very dense, and as I said, you can't argue with, that because we can see it as we can look out into the sky, our best theory of how the universe got into that state is that there was a time before that, and it's called inflation. What existed before the Big Bang? This question has always been a difficulty for scientists, but now it seems they found the answer to it. But it has shocked scientists, like Brian Cox revealed that a terrifying event existed before the Big Bang. So the idea is, the universe was, it was there in a sense, cold and empty and expanded extremely quickly, and that growth slowed. Down came to a halt, and the power that was driving that expansion got dumped into space, warmed it up, and produced all the particles out of which were made. That's what we call the Big Bang. So what? Why did it exist before the Big Bang? Frightened scientists. Let's find out. And that theory has a kind of an extension called eternal inflation, which is that the inflation essentially goes on forever and it just stops in little patches. So you imagine the stretch, the fabric of the universe space-I'm stretch after stretching out. It slows down and stops in little patches. And each one of those patches is basically a big bang and a universe of which ours is one. So you end up with this sort of picture of an infinite fractal universe of basically an infinite number of big bangs, also known as the inflationary. The concept of the multiverse in the vast cosmos of absolute nothingness seems theoretical rather than real. Even if all energy were removed from the universe, it would not be truly empty at the moment. The universe is full of matter, radiation, antimatter neutrinos, dark matter, and dark energy. Even without energy, the universe still creates new forms of energy. This phenomenon confuses us. It seems the universe doesn't understand our concept of complete emptiness. If we removed all energy leaving a void, one might expect the universe to reach absolute zero with no particles. Yet that's not the case. Its expansion, even in an empty universe, would still produce radiation. This extends far into the future, or even back to the time before the hot Big Bang. The it appears that the universe never truly becomes void. Given all of this, is it plausible that the universe originated from nothing? We can be certain that something always persists, even if particles, antiparticles, photons, and quanta are removed. Empty space remains if we move away from any mass or energy sources, clear the space of external electric fields of magnetism and gravitation, and prevent photons or gravitational waves from entering. A physical form, emptiness still exists in this space. Quantum fields endure and the fundamental constants and laws of physics endure. There is an inherent finite positive and non-zero value of zero-point energy in that space. This represents the closest approximation to nothing within our universe. While you might envision an even more nothing-like state, it lacks physical reality. No experiment can replicate such a condition by adhering to scientific principles that we acknowledge that always exists because true nothingness cannot coexist in our universe, yet the question of why remains unanswered by currently, our universe appears to science. Far from empty, it's teeming with stars, gas, dust, galaxies, quasars, cosmic rays, and radiation from both starlight and the remnants of the Big Bang. With improved observational tools, we could potentially detect additional signals that we anticipate are present. This encompasses gravitational waves produced by any mass that moves through a changing gravitational field. The mysterious signals from the constituents of dark matter and a broader perspective on black, holes both active and dormant, aside from those emitting the most radiation, is the cause of everything we see. In a universe that isn't static, but is continuously changing from a physical standpoint, it's intriguing to comprehend the grand scale. Of our universe's evolution scale, the known universe's fabric as space-time is expanding. This implies that if you position two points far apart in your space-time, the proper distance that separates those two locations, time it takes for light to 
traverse between them and the wavelength of the light. Traveling from one point to the other, things all rise over time. The universe isn't just getting bigger. It's also getting colder as it expands. Light stretches to longer wavelengths. It moves. Towards lower energies and cooler temperatures, the universe was hotter in the past and will become even colder in objects from the future. During this process with mass or energy in the universe, attract each other forming clusters and creating a vast cosmic network. If you were to somehow remove everything matter, the entire amount of energy that would be radiated essentially remain empty. You'd space itself continues to expand. Governed by the laws of physics and still influenced by quantum fields that fill the universe, this is the closest physical approximation to true nothingness, yet it continues to specific physical principles. To a physicist in this reality, removing anything else would create an unrealistic state that no longer reflects the cosmos we inhabit. This suggests that dark energy as we currently understand it would still be present in this hypothetical universe. Devoid of matter. In essence, if every the universe's quantum field was set to its lowest energy state, we would arrive at the zero-point energy of space, where no additional energy could be extracted for mechanical work in a universe containing dark. Energy, a cosmological constant, or the energy at the zero point in quantum fields. It's plausible that the zero-point energy wouldn't be truly zero, as the universe continues to expand and cool. There will come a time in the distant future when radiation becomes the dominant component surpassing other forms of matter and radiation, leaving dark energy as the primary influence. However, there's also a period in the universe's history, not in the future, but a long time ago when something else besides matter and radiation held dominance during cosmic inflation prior to the hot Big Bang, our universe underwent extremely rapid and constant expansion instead of being dominated by matter and radiation. The cosmos was controlled by the field energy of inflation, akin to today's dark energy, but much more potent and expanding significantly more rapidly, if eternal inflation is accurate, but time remains finite, where might the universe have originated? There must have been a beginning correct to address this question thoroughly. Let's unravel three commonly conflated concepts and discuss each individually. The hot Big Bang in relation to our universe, the theory of cosmic or cosmological inflation, and its role in preceding and preparing for the Big Bang and the issue of an ultimate beginning or origin for our. The universe and why the original Big Bang and inflation theory may not provide a satisfactory solution to this question. In the early 20th century, a significant synthesis took place when four key pieces of information came together. A breakthrough by Alexander Friedman in Einstein's demonstration of general relativity showed that a universe filled uniformly with any form of matter and energy cannot remain static but must either expand or contract. This expansion's rate or contraction is influenced by the overall energy density in space. The observational work of Henrietta Leavitt established a relationship between the time period of brightness and dimness of variable stars and their inherent radiance, which is known as the period-luminosity relationship. Observations by Vesto, Slipher, measuring redshift or the change in light, blue shifted from our solar system's perspective in elliptical and spiral nebulae, which have since been identified as galaxies, indicated that these galaxies were rapidly moving away from us at high speeds. Alongside Edwin Hubble, similar types were identified by Milton Humason, similar to the variable stars discovered by Henrietta Leavitt in spiral and elliptical nebulae. This enabled them to gauge the distances to these galaxies and confirmed they were beyond our own. These findings, combined with other data, led to the concept of the universe expanding. If the universe expands, it suggests that over time, space itself stretches, causing the matter it contains to become less dense. As space expands, radiation like light waves not only becomes less concentrated, but also stretches, leading to the universe cooling. If we rewind the clock, the opposite would occur to matter and radiation in the universe. In earlier times, when the universe was younger, it was denser 
and hotter. If we rewind further, all matter and radiation would have been squeezed into a smaller space, increasing the density of the universe. The light, which stretched due to cosmic expansion when reversed in time, would have had a shorter wavelength, resulting in hotter temperatures. If you envision extending back as far as physics will allow, you'd reach a singular state where all matter and radiation existed within a single point of infinite density and temperature. This initial idea of the Big Bang was formed. The Big Bang theory proposed five key expectations regarding the hot and dense early universe conditions. These forecasts became the foundation of the Big Bang theory. The universe ought to demonstrate expansion because of a distinct redshift relationship between extragalactic objects. Initially, the universe should have been relatively uniform, with structures like stars, galaxies, and clusters of galaxies gradually taking shape and evolving over time. In the past, the universe was hotter, stifling the growth of stable neutral atoms. This prediction led to the discovery of the cosmic microwave background, which is observable today. In the initial stages of the universe, when it was extremely hot, Atomic nuclei couldn't form stably. This led to the creation of light. Elements like hydrogen, helium, lithium, and their isotopes. The universe was so hot that neutrinos played a significant role. Recently, this prediction was confirmed, indicating that cosmic neutrinos should have detectable effects on both the large-scale structure and the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. This is particularly evident from observations supporting these predictions. The Big Bang theory has remained the undisputed primary explanation for the early universe since the middle of the 1960s, when the discovery of the cosmic microwave background provided evidence supporting the hot Big Bang theory. In the 1960s and 1970s, certain challenges surfaced that the Big Bang alone couldn't resolve. Several observations contradicted the concept of the universe originating from a singular state of incredibly high temperatures and density. Three obstacles stand out. The horizon problem, the flatness problem, and the monopole or ancient relic problem. In the horizon problem, when we observe in divergent directions, the universe seems to possess uniform density and temperatures throughout. However, since the onset of the blazing fast Big Bang, regions never had the opportunity to communicate, exchange information, or achieve thermal equilibrium with one another. This raises the question, how did they evolve to maintain consistent temperature and conditions across the board? In the flatness problem, in a universe that's expanding, there is a constant struggle between the initial expansion pushing things apart and gravitational forces attempting to pull everything back together. Remarkably, these opposing forces in our universe appear to be in perfect harmony, resulting in a spatially flat universe. The question arises, why did our universe come into existence with these particular characteristics? The monopole or ancient relic problem questions why, if the universe underwent extreme temperatures and energy conditions in its early stages, we do not observe any exotic remnants such as right-handed neutrinos and magnetic monopoles. Theoretically, these particles should be detectable and still present today. Rather than just accepting these conditions as how the universe came to be, which contradicts the scientific method, scientists looked for a mechanism that would establish and arrange these initial conditions. Alan Guth introduced a solution to these cosmological mysteries in 1980 with a groundbreaking paper. He suggested that an early phase of rapid and continuous expansion, where the energy of the universe did not spread across matter and radiation particles, but was an intrinsic part of space itself via a field or a different method, could solve all three issues. Regarding the horizon problem, the uniformity of temperature and the overall density of the universe is attributed to the past interconnectedness of everything. This connection stretched during the early expansion phase, called inflation, resulting in the current conditions observed. For the flatness problem, inflation expanded the universe so much that, regardless of its initial state, the now visible portion appears uniformly flat. As for the monopole problem, the absence of ancient relics is explained by inflation, 
preventing the universe from reaching excessively high energies or temperatures. The maximum temperature reached after inflation avoids the formation of these remnants. In the 1980s, accurate inflation theory and testable forecasts about the beginnings of the cosmic structure were developed, which ought to be detectable in both the cosmic microwave background and the large-scale layout of the universe. These forecasts, crafted decades ago, have been validated by observations spanning from the 1990s to the present day, encompassing an almost, though not entirely, scale-invariant spectrum of imperfections, variations in density and temperature, and density irregularities that are entirely adiabatic and not at all isocurvature. In essence, fluctuations on scales larger than what a signal traveling at the speed of light in an expanding universe may result in a maximum temperature limit for the universe during the hot Big Bang, notably smaller than the Planck scale. Because... Inflation involves a rapid expansion of space. Rather than reaching a singularity, like the original model for the Big Bang, it presents an alternative depiction of the beginning. Instead of time and space gradually emerging from a single state, inflation proposes a rapid expansion leading to the Big Bang. This raises a fundamental question about the actual beginning of the universe, if such a notion even makes sense within. The Framework of the Hot Big Bang Without inflation, we could trace back and reach a singular state where the universe's size is close to zero in a limited time. 